Santa. You're needed in human resources, please. No. You got this, Petey. Come on now. There you Yes. I got it. <laughs> hey. Good job. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, you got some, huh? You got some stuff on your nose? Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, have you seen him? No, it's my first day. Yeah, mine too. This may be the best day of my life. <laughs> I know. He just oozes kindness, you know? If he walked in here right now, I would totally turn into a snow puddle. They say that his eyes just radiate with love and, and candy, but mostly love. They say that he makes you feel like you are the only person in the room. Have you ever seen how the children's faces just light up when they see him? The hope that he spreads? I can't hardly contain myself right now. <laughs> Can you imagine being friends with him? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sometimes there aren't enough words to express how amazing he is. We should celebrate him all year round. If it were up to me, we would. His love, his grace, coming to this earth to save us. Come on, guys. Let's go celebrate Jesus' birthday. FYI, I was I was talking about Jesus the whole time. Oh, I was too. Mm -hmm. I I one hundred percent was talking about Jesus. Same thing. Same yep. thing. Such a long, long time ago On a night with stars so bright They came by the light of a glistening glow Just to open up their eyes Why, in the face of a child of innocence One by one they dropped to their knees In awe of this marvelous king An infant of majesty Oh, what a beautiful mystery Of hope to a world That would never be the same By the name Christ the King, 
is born in Bethlehem. Saints and angels of heaven sing. Good evening. It's good to see all of you who are here, and it's good to see that there are people online watching, and we're so glad that you're with us tonight, and we come to celebrate the birth of Christ, the eve of his birth. Anyway, we're so glad that you're here tonight, and uh, I pray that this time will be a blessing to you as it normally is to us. But these are unusual circumstances, so we'll just kind of muddle through it in the best way possible. Amen? Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll begin. Father, we do thank you and praise you, for you are worthy of our praise. We come tonight, Lord, because you are the God who promised a Redeemer. And tonight we celebrate the birth of that Redeemer, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you and praise you for him who has come to redeem us of our sin. Tonight, Lord, we rejoice because the light of the world has gone, and we are so excited to celebrate them. But help us tonight, Lord, that we celebrate not about what we're, we're going to get, but what we can give away in the, God, in the economy of God's love, to pass around the gospel that others may know of your great love for us. Tonight we celebrate the Christ child. In a few short months we will celebrate his redemption on a cross. But Lord, always we celebrate you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, tonight we have a few change, a few difficult or different things for you to, to observe. Uh, you saw the skit guys earlier. This is a little unusual. We thought in these times that we needed a bit of humor to uh, attend to the celebration of Jesus' birth. So enjoy this skit. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director, who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. Our annual Christmas show is tonight, and all the hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears comes down to this very moment. And like, like any show, there's gonna be some last minute snafus. Um, like, like, for example, my middle-aged Mary, she's been having contractions for about six, 16 hours. My Joseph hasn't memorized all his lines. Uh, Amy? Mary, my, <laughs> my dear Mary, it's been a long journey. 
My wise man is convinced that the nativity set will collapse. And my shepherd can't find a lemon for his tea. Articulatory agility as a marvelous ability, manipulating with dexterity. We are telling the most beautiful and important story that's ever been told about an event that changed the world. We've lost the lamb. Mm -hmm. Quick, everyone make lamb noises. Call her back to the flock. He knows the lamb's a dog, right? Medical experts actually do not recommend this method for uh, dealing with panic attacks. But my mom recommends lavender behind the ears. Get away from me! I'm calling an ambulance. I think I'll be fine. It's for me. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Thank you guys so much for coming! Merry everyone! It's time. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. I have this long-held tradition, I guess you could call it. Every year during the performance, I, uh, I step off the stage and leave the building. I just want God to do what God does. And the shepherds came with haste, and they found, found Mary, Mary and Joseph, Joseph in the in baby, the lying in the manger. It doesn't matter where you see the nativity story, whether it's on a street corner or, or in a church or even on your neighbor's mantle. When you see it, you, you have to consider it then and there. Are you willing to kneel at the manger? Will you believe in the miracle of Christmas, the glory of Christmas? Trust that this is the way that God chose to save us all. And all who heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned. Glorifying and worshiping God for all the things that they have seen and heard as it was said unto them. Amen. That's why we're here. We're together to visit the manger in a stable in Bethlehem. So join with us tonight as we celebrate the birth of Christ. We're going to begin tonight by first lighting the candle of anticipation, the candle of hope. We will read Isaiah chapter 9 beginning in verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. 
establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Join us as we sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Stand if you can, sit if you need to, let us sing. Lighting the second candle, we can begin to see the light of God's love because love has entered the world in the person of Jesus the Christ. From Romans 5.8, we find these words, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then John 3.16 and 17, maybe you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We'll stay seated for this one. Maybe you know this one too. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, 
Let his little child come here. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. we light the third candle, we consider the joy that the Savior will bring. Isaiah 35.10 tells us, And the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sign will flee away. In Isaiah 55, verse 12, you will go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And then in 56, verse 7, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Stand if you'd like to on this next one, if you can. We're going to sing this one. And even though you have a mask on, I still hope that you'll smile. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let them their song employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sound. Let sin and sorrows grow, and thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders of Amen. And now we light the fourth candle, which is the candle of peace. Because of the Christ child, we have hope for the perfect peace that passes understanding. In Isaiah 6, uh, chapter 11, verses 69, it says, The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion, and the yearling together, and the little child 
will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And now we light the final candle, the most important candle, candle, the candle that represents the Christ child, the candle that honors the birth of Christ, the Son of God, the one true light who has come in to bring the light of God into our hearts and our homes. He is the light of the world, Emmanuel, God with us. John 1, beginning in verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. In John 8, verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. That. Thank you for hearing the word of God. Tonight is the feast. In a few moments, we're going to pass the light and let everybody have an opportunity to share in passing that light around. But in the meantime, I want to share just a few words with you. 
We live in a, a world that is in conflict today, a world that is troubled, disunited, struggling, where people are living in depression. People are struggling to make ends meet financially. People are worried about their health. All these things are happening in our world, but there is hope, and there is joy, and there is peace, and there is Christ. And most of all, there is his love, because he came to give his love to you and me. It's a familiar story we find in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 4. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. As we gather together tonight, whether here in person or electronically, I want you to consider the awesome event that, can, that, can, that was taking place some 2,000 years ago. I want you to think about the fact that there were no gaily decorated trees. There were no lights hung from the windows and strewn around the yard and hanging from the eaves of the houses. There were no gifts under the what some people call the heathen bush. There was none of that. And yet one of the most important and profound events of time immemorial had taken place. There was no Santa Claus sitting on a street corner or in a department store calling the little kids to come and sit on his lap and telling their wishes and desires. There was none of that. We have to consider how did things go so astray? How did they get changed? How did it go from what was real to what in reality was in so many ways profoundly fake? The reality is the light of the world came to you and to me to bring salvation to us. What really happened was that there was a young mother, probably in her teen years, a husband wondering how he was going to care for his very pregnant wife. In all likelihood, even though we've seen her perched on a donkey, there was no donkey, because at the time a donkey was reserved for royalty. I don't know if you knew that. So in likelihood, she had walked many miles with her husband to come to this little town of Bethlehem. Sore-footed and cold and probably hungry. And they came to the little town of Bethlehem. And she knew that she was about to deliver this promised child. I would only imagine that she had profound faith in the God who had told her that she was going to bear a child who was going to be called Emmanuel, God with us. And so they came, and you can imagine their anxiety. Where shall we go? What shall we do? There are so many people. They are flooding the streets. There are 
is no place to stay. Where will this child be born? And you can imagine they go from door to door in this small hamlet, seeking a place to have a child. Knocking time after time, only to be turned away until someone, we don't know who, until someone in kindness said, we have only this place, this stable. And so there in a humble, mean little place, warm by the heat of the animals contained therein, a young woman named Mary gave birth to the Christ child. She gave him birth and wrapped him not in the finery of the king of heaven, not in the royal robes that he deserved, but wrapped him in the humble cloths of peasant people and lay him in a manger, a place where the animals would eat. We depict that scene so many times. And we make it beautiful in our minds and we make it beautiful in our pictures. But in reality, if you've ever been in a stable, it was not beautiful. There was all of the things attendant to animals in a stable. You can only imagine the smell, the flies. All of the things that we don't like to think about. And into that place, the earthly life of the Messiah began. This child, this baby, who lay in the manger would one day hang on the cross for your sins and mine. No tinsel, no decorated tree, no gaily wrapped presents, no glitzy lights, just a stable in a manger. And I'm sure some hunger and even cold. What a place for a king to be born. Instead of the carolers in the street, there was something even better. The scripture tells us that while there were no carolers in the street, the heavenly choirs of angels stood on a hill and told the shepherds that their king had been born and they would find him in a manger. Instead of the glitzy lights hung from the eaves of houses and all of those kinds of decorations we've grown to expect today, some of them, I'm ashamed to say, having absolutely nothing to do with Christ or Christmas. Somehow I just can't wrap my head around Yoda being part of the Christmas celebration. But what was there to celebrate his birth was arranged by God, the star in the heavens, to light the way to the Christ child. That was the heavenly announcement of the birth of the king. Tonight as we gather together here and as in a moment or two we'll pass the light of celebration, the light of the world, I want you to consider this. Among the people of the world into which he entered and he came to save, there was no room for him. 
And sometimes I'm ashamed to say that in our world today, we are so full of ourselves and the selfishness of Christmas. And what are we going to get that we miss the importance of the child who came to save us? And while there was no room in the inn those many years ago, I pray that today there'll be room in your heart. I hope that over these 2,000 years, something has changed so that your heart is open to receive the King. That you will open your heart, throw open the doors of your life, so when the Prince of Peace knocks, he will say, Welcome. Come in. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Or would your heart be so filled with the stuff of the world that there'd be no room only you can answer that question. Only you know. He taps on the door of your heart. And he brings love and joy and peace and hope. So great that you cannot contain them. And he says, these are yours if you'll only let me in. I beg you tonight, open the door and let him in. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, as we come to this time, as we celebrate the birth of the King, Emmanuel, wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, as we come to this time, Lord, we celebrate you. For you have loved us with an everlasting love. You have given everything that we might have life and have it to the full. Lord, help us to lay our gift at your feet. Our gift, Lord, the broken pieces of lives misspent the challenges that we face, the illnesses, the fears, the frustration, all of those things, Lord, we give to you and you take them and you mend them and you make them right. And then we can say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, you should each have a candle. And as we pass the light, I'm going to uh, take a candle and light it from this Christ candle. And then we are going to share that with you. And when all of the candles are lit, we will sing.